This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we're going to show you how to make your own pleated motorcycle seat cover. We'll be transforming this seat cover into a beautiful pleated or channeled seat using supplies from Sailrite. This video will show you how to pattern, how to sew pleats, create your own boxing, top stitching, and of course stapling. Let's get started. We're going to create a pleated top for this motorcycle seat. To do this, we need to make a pattern for the top of the seat. We will use paper and trace around the seat turned upside down on top. We'll fold the paper in half lengthwise and match up the lines as best as possible. Then cut the pattern out while it is still folded. This should create a uniform pattern. Our motorcycle seat is rather small, so we will not worry much about shrinkage as the pleats are being sewn. However, if you're creating a larger panel which includes pleats, we recommend you do some calculations for the amount of shrinkage that will naturally occur with each pleat. Each pleat will usually shrink the project by about an eighth of an inch, depending on the thickness of the scrim foam. Use these calculations to determine the cut length of the fabric and foam, so you do not end up with a panel that is too small for the job when done sewing the pleats. To create our pleats, we'll be using a polyurethane foam with fabric backing. This is a three-quarter inch foam from Sailrite. Polyurethane foam with fabric backing three-quarter is a wonderful scrim foam that is often used for creating pleats in fabric, or sometimes called channeling. The polyurethane foam is backed with a spun-bonded polyester fabric, and this fabric keeps the stitch from pulling through the foam when channeling or pleating is done. In this video, we're going to use it to create a pleated motorcycle seat, but it's also great for boat and automotive upholstery applications and even for making handbags and purses. Polyurethane foam with fabric backing is available at sayarite.com. We will now cut the foam, often called scrim foam, to the appropriate size of the seat top. Cut it bigger. This should also be done to the vinyl fabric. Once cut out, we will now glue the fabric to the foam side, not the scrim side. To accomplish this task, we like to use the 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. We will spray only the underside of the vinyl fabric, but you can also spray the foam as well. Now simply apply the vinyl fabric to the foam side and press down, being sure all wrinkles are removed. Gluing the fabric to the foam will ensure that it does not easily move around while the pleats are being sewn in. It is a very important step, so do not skip it. Our desired pleat width is 1 and 1 8 inch. Yours may be different. So we will mark the underside of the foam with the spun bond fabric scrim to 1 and a quarter inch. Why the eighth inch more? Because when each pleat's top stitch is completed, it will shrink the fabric and pleat by about an eighth of an inch. So the resulting pleat will be about 1 and 1 8 inch when done. Let's rewind and take a look at the first pleat marked on the foam. You will notice that the first pleat marked is about an extra half inch away from the edge of the fabric. That space will be used for seam allowance of a half inch, so do not just start right at the edge of the fabric marking your pleat one and a quarter inch away, but add the half inch for seam allowance for that first pleat. This half inch seam allowance should be factored in for the last pleat on the opposite end as well. Always be sure your bobbin is full before sewing pleats. You do not want to run out of thread in the middle of a pleat. Angela will carefully position the needle over the line she marked on the panel and then slowly sew down the length of the pleat being diligent to guide the fabric so the stitch stays as straight as possible over the line. Since we will be cutting the edges off the panel, we will not do any reverse stitching to lock the stitch in place at the beginning and the end. Sewing through foam and vinyl fabric will possibly play tricks with your tension, so it is best to test on scrap first. Too much tension will cause excessive wrinkling of the fabric. Just because we mark the underside of the foam with our pleats does not mean you have to do that. If you'd like, you can keep a close eye on your tension and how it looks from the top side. You can mark the fabric pleat lines on the vinyl side and sew with that side up. Just be sure the lines will easily come off the fabric so you will want to use a grease pencil or other fabric marking pencil. 
Next, we will lay our pattern on top of the finished panel and trace around it. We will not be adding any seam allowance here since the pattern is a little on the large size and we will be pulling it firmly over the seat bottom to make a tight fitting cover. This should position our boxing seam right along the outer edge of the seat when finished. To cut our boxing to size, we need to take some measurements off the seat. We will measure from the top edge to the bottom side of the seat where it will be stapled. Do not short yourself. Better have extra width than not enough. Then we measure around the seat sides to ensure we have enough length. Again, go extra by a few inches at least. Now simply cut a boxing strip to the width desired and the length. Fold the assembly in half and mark the center location. Do the same with the seat top that is pleated. We will sew the boxing starting at the front side of the seat, positioning the center lines directly on top of each other. We want to sew our straight stitch about a half inch away from the raw edges of the fabric. And we will do some reversing here to lock the stitch in place. As it is being sewn down, we will carefully line up the raw edges as we sew. Notice that Angela is pulling ever so slightly on the pleated panel and the boxing. This is typically not something that is done with regular sewing, but with a channeled fabric like this, we want it to lay fairly flat when the boxing is secured. So here, a slight pull often results in a better looking finished project. Watch carefully to see how much she is pulling the fabric. Too much pulling in your project will be ruined, so be careful. When she gets to a corner, she will carefully line up the edges and sew around slowly. Here we are coming to the back side of the seat. We have only sewn down one side. The other side is still not sewn. We want to stop short of the center line by about two inches. This unsewn area will make it possible to sew the two halves of the boxing ends together at the rear of the seat in a later step. Here's the unsewn part. You can see it's approximately two inches from the center line. To sew the opposite side, we'll flip the assembly and again start sewing at the front of the seat's center line. Sew around just as you did with the opposite side, stopping a few inches away from the back of the seat's center line yet again. You'll notice now the boxing is on top and the pleated fabric is underneath. That's because we flipped the assembly to sew this side. Also take note to see how much Angela pulls the boxing and the pleated fabric as she sews, just as she did earlier. Okay, we're coming up to the seat's back center position and we will stop a few inches from the center line. To join the boxing ends together, try to determine where they should come together by walking them along the unsewn section of the seat top. Then hold them together at that location and take them to the sewing machine and sew down the boxing length at that location, being careful to keep the stitch at a 90 degree angle from the boxing's bottom edge. In other words, straight. Here it is sewing, and you can see it's perfect. Cut away any extra length of boxing, but leave at least a half inch or more going past the stitch we just sewed. We will splay the back side of the boxing seam open and place this one inch strip of fabric over the splayed section of the fabric. We are creating a French seam here. A French seam has a top stitch on both sides of the main center seam. Here is a quick illustration to show how we will accomplish this French seam. With the fabric splayed open and the extra strip of fabric on the bottom side, Angela will now carefully sew a stitch about an eighth inch away from the first stitch using her presser foot as a guide to help keep it straight. As with any top stitch, as you sew, be sure to pull the center seam apart to keep it flat and in the center. Once the top stitch is done on one side, switch to the next side and repeat the process. It's always a good idea to sew on the same side of the presser foot if you're using that as a guide. That's why she flipped the panel around here. Okay. 
Now go back and finish off the area which was left unsewn. After this is done, we will sew a single top stitch to the boxing where it is sewn to the top of the seat. We'll do that in the next step. To sew our top stitch, we will need to turn the cover right side out, and then we will sew about an eighth inch away from the first stitch, being sure to catch the bottom flap of fabric as we sew. It is best to place this top stitch on the boxing and not on the top channeled plate. Here Angela is starting at the back side of the cushion where the French seam was just created. She did a little bit of reversing and then continues to sew around using the presser foot as a guide. Note, as she sews, she pulls on the two halves of the fabric so it is nice and flat and laying open on the center seam. When we get to the back side, do some more reversing and you are done. Next up, we'll staple this cover to the seat. We have fit the cover over the seat and we'll now staple it in place. We will be stapling the front and the rear of the seat first. We're using Sayerite's Easy E half inch crown stapler with stainless steel staples. This is a pneumatic stapler. These half inch crown staples are wider than the normal staple of 3 8 inch, so they resist splitting the vinyl fabric. Here's a demo showing the stapling the same vinyl fabric. The first is a standard 3 8 inch crown staple, and now with the easy half inch crown stapler. Watch as we pull the vinyl. You can see the half inch crown does not pull through the vinyl as easily as the 3 8 crown does. Also, because it's a pneumatic stapler, you can turn down the PSI amount on your air compressor to reduce the force that is applied to the staple, which in turn helps to keep the staple from driving too deep and thus cutting the vinyl fabric. Now that the front and back are stapled in place, we will secure the sides, pulling the fabric over the seat and checking for a good fit and look. The Easy TC-08 staple gun with half inch crown is a reasonably priced staple gun for upholstery applications and it's sold at Zayrite.com. If you don't want to spend the money on a new staple gun, or if you don't have one, you can use a standard Aero brand stapler to do this job also. We recommend using stainless steel staples or Manel staples. Once stapled in place, trim away the excess fabric with scissors. Our pleated or channeled motorcycle seat is now complete. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that we use to make this pleated or channeled motorcycle seat cover. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayrite website or subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayrite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.